Ladies and gentlemen, hello. This is probably the first time you've seen my face, like, in a long time. Like, if you've watched my videos a long time ago, you might have seen my face once. But here I am. And today I'm going to be reacting to this video called The Rise and Fall of Visual Novels. Because I'm curious. Like, I know that visual novels have certainly risen, but I was not sure of any fall that would put me and a lot of content creators in jeopardy if visual novels were just to drop off the planet. So let's see what the fuck is happening with visual novels and why the hell they're falling. Alrighty. Surprise me. May manga and anything that has an anime. I'm watching on this monitor. So if you're wondering why I'm looking this way. Look in general. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Start from the beginning, please. We want visual novels and the fall of them. Beautiful. When it comes to anime, manga, and anything that has an anime look in general, I and many other people have noticed an increase in popularity over time. That is correct, and well, well, I'm already stopping the video, but maybe he's talking about the uh, rise from 2020, because especially if you look like at the anime and visual novel subreddits, they just go like, at like the 2020 mark. I know Reddit isn't like the exact indicator of popularity of some things, but it definitely shows that people are showing more interest in it, at least. Yeah, that's a bit vague, but I mean specifically around the 2000s and then the early and mid 2010s. That's interesting. I don't know anything about that, so I'm interested. There was even a boom on Steam with anime style games that started in 2014. One of a lot of those like anime style games though are kind of like they just are like porn or like they want to be porn or there's some stupid shit like hentai shooter Hitler just to like give to your friends to troll them. So I don't know. One of the specific genres that saw a huge rise in popularity during that time was visual novels. And that's what I want to focus on on this video specifically. Now while I'm right- He's probably just talking about like specifically Nekapara because I bet Nekapara volume one came out in 2014. Writing this, I'm not sure what the exact video title will be, but the working title currently is The Rise and Fall of Visual Novels. So he doesn't even know if visual novels are going to fall, but at least he's going to talk about the rise of them, that's fair. With fall being in quotes, it's important to keep that in mind while watching. I'll explain that fall part when the time comes. He probably only puts fall in the title just for clickbait, like quote unquote fall. There is no fall. We're at the top, baby. In fact, we can probably only go down from here, but we haven't fallen yet. We're like stagnating. But first, let's talk about the rise. If you don't know what... Why does the video like look like shit? Sorry guys, my name is shit right now. If you don't know what visual novels are, basically they are stories that you follow along on PC or console. Graphics are very simple with characters having several sprites for different expressions. Why, uh, why does the video look like shit, man? Several sprites for different expressions. Okay, it looks better. We're not autoing, we're doing 100% 1080-60p and I will accept no less. Expressions. And the backgrounds are also 2D illustrations. They don't feature gameplay mostly, but usually they 100% do not. And if they do, a lot of people don't even call them visual novels. So they do have various dialogue options that allow you to alter the course of the story. In other words, there are various routes. There are several genres within visual novels, as you can imagine. The most common one people think of are romance or dating sim style visual novels, where there are various girls who are the protagonist's potential love interest. And usually there are several routes for not only each girl, but things like bad, normal, and good ends. Off I wouldn't say usually. Like, more often than not, a lot of visual novels just don't bother with that. They either have, like, the good ends. I would like to say a lot of visual novels have, like, multiple different ends. But, like, realistically, the more I play, the more I realize they just don't give a shit. It's either good ends or nothing. I really appreciate bad ends, mind you. Bad ends can help with the story. And they can even add things to the story. But a lot of visual novels do not bother, which is unfortunate. Often there will be true ends that can only be unlocked if you play through all the routes or, you know, complete certain criteria. The fact that there are 18 plus and all ages versions of VNs is also very common. You probably already noticed this from the description, but there are other genres of anime style games that overlap quite heavily. And so while I'm talking- Yeah man, like Honey Pop's pretty much a visual novel. You just like, you play the puzzles and then like two screens of visual novel-esque things. And yeah, that's a visual novel pretty much, yeah. Talking about VN specifically, other things like anime puzzle games like Honey Pop, for example, 
have such a strong visual novel and also dating sim element to them. No visual novel and dating sim, but what he really should have said is just dating sim. I guess it's hard to tell from the outskirts the difference between a visual novel and a dating sim, but visual novels are not dating sims. Dating sims are like Honey Pop, for example. Like you got to do things to make the girl happy, like with stats and shit, and then you get the girl... That's pretty much a dating sim. If there's a visual novel afterwards, well, whatever. It's still a freaking dating sim. A visual novel is pretty much just freaking text. It's a visual novel. I'm not playing a freaking, like, puzzle. I'm not a solving Einstein's equations just to freaking read some shit, man. That they, you know, yeah, that kind of genre also is very much related to what we're talking about here. Up until the 2000s and early 2010s. Most likely he just mentioned it because, like, Honey Pop is a very popular i guess game so that's probably did it just to relate to the viewers but no that's not even close to a visual novel it's a uh, definitely an anime game but it's not a visual novel visual novels were not really localized or translated officially if you wanted to play them you either needed to know japanese had to read a guide or download fan translated versions or patches well, you had to do at least two of those, and all of those, like, you either had to know Japanese and read a guide, or play the fan-translated patch and read a guide, if the visual novel needed a guide. Reading a guide on its own will not help you. Like, you can look at the G I mean, unless you're just looking for the pretty pictures, or unless you're just looking for the freaking H scenes, reading a guide does pretty much nothing on its own. So, you have to do at least two or three of those things. And one of those always has to be to read a guide, probably. I personally played a handful of different ones during, you know, those times there. The Sagra Family and Wanko no Kurasu. Has anybody played these games? I would love to know more about these games. Are ones that I remember off the top of my head. I think there were a couple more. Back then, and when I say back then, I mean like 2009 or 2010-ish. There wasn't that much online info about games. I just looked for something highly rated that was translated and gave that a go. And other people that is a good way to go about it aware of the genre basically that the same thing the rise of anime popularity during the 2000s and 2010s made more and more people aware of visual novels that is true i was aware of visual novels but that doesn't mean i played them because of their constant references to them whether they be specific examples or references to gameplay mechanics or common tropes found within that genre i'm sure you've all heard about you know bad end school days man uh, but he's talking about bad ends here, and I will give him this. The bad end in school days, the bad ends in school days are why you play school days. Like, there's good ends, but, like, there's just nothing compared to the awesomeness that is the bad ends. If you've seen my review, I've said the same thing. They're just fucking awesome. Just play this game for the bad ends. References before. Then there's anime that originated as visual novels, like Higurashi and... And 100% that anime was a lot worse than Higurashi, the visual novel. So you should have played the visual novel. Unfortunate. The ever popular Fate series. What else is there? Clanad, Canon, Little Busters. He's just he's just scrolling through like the key publisher page or the key developer page. I don't know, on Steam, like Planetarian. Harmonia, Clanad, Little Busters rewrite. I'm glad he mentioned Little Busters. That makes this video like three times better to me but he's he's just scrolling through it like he doesn't even know yeah there's a bunch of those oh he does know but uh sorry i'm in the way but the, it says those are all key vns i just realized so he does know at least he's like conscious of it but still <laughs> it's kind of funny by the early and mid 2010s things really started to change when it comes to oh sorry when it came to availability of japanese media more and more games started getting western releases the manga section started getting significantly larger in bookstores. This I can't attest to because I don't live near any bookstore, and by the time I like was into this shit, it was already popular. So somebody else would have to like let me know about it. And people even started to know what light novels were. I How fucking dare they know what light novels are? Remember around 2010 when basically the only English light novels available were The Melancholy of Harry Suzumiya and Spice and Wolf. I do not. And Spice and Wolf even had an alternate cover to make it look not Japanese. And that's probably for the best, because at least for me personally at that time, and pretty much until 2020, until I got into visual novels, I hated the entire anime style. I completely hated it. Eventually I got into it, I got absorbed into it, but that's fair. I hated it. 
because they thought it would turn off potential readers if they saw the anime art style. I bring this up specifically because nowadays, non-Japanese games try and emulate that art style in order to, you know, get more sales, so I think that's pretty interesting. It is interesting, but I wouldn't say it's a good practice. I mean, like, I will specifically I'm looking at this and this is like super anime. -y. It's just like cartoony. So I don't know, like the specific example he's trying to make here. But even like the games that do try to emulate the uh, Japanese anime style. Exactly. They're usually not very high quality, honestly. 2014 and 15 are the years when things really picked up for visual novels. Not only did we see the release of Nekapara Volume 1, which was, which was probably the like biggest freaking release at the time and the most sold visual novel, was really big at the time, but that was also the time we saw the birth of the Sakura series by Wind Cloud, which is a Western developer. Never heard of it. Don't know anything about Wind Cloud. Probably like shovelware, honestly, if it's a Western developer. Both series saw tremendous sales success, which in turn caught Looks like shovelware. Looks like a Renpai visual novel. That's all I can say about that. ...caused many popular YouTubers to make Let's Play videos on them. I know I'm mentioning the Sakura and Neko Paro games specifically here, but there were several others too. But I'm... Like, those several others are the ones I want to know. I'm not gonna go through all of them. You know, just, uh... Like, Neko Paro and, like, the Sak Sakura series... I don't know, like, I know about Neko Paro, but nothing about the Sakura series. Please tell me about those other visual novels. Those are probably the important ones. Those are probably the ones I want to read. Uh, look on any database that shows VNs sort by... Like, you know, visual database. There's no way he didn't, like, find that, but he just doesn't mention it. By date, and you can see what there is. Even on Steam, you can do that. Just look when it was released, and you'll see a bunch during that era there. Like I said, not only did popular YouTubers play these games, but... In not really. I mean, like, at least for, like, Nekopara and Sakura, not really, man. No YouTuber that I have ever known of has played these games. Like, has, like, a million subscribers or something like that. ...was that several up-and-coming YouTubers gained more and more popularity because... Sure, fair enough. Up-and-coming, subscribe to me. Make me up-and-coming. ...they were doing Let's Plays. A good example of a channel that gained a lot of subscribers during that time period was Lost Pause. Because, uh, what did he do? I have no idea what Lost Pause is, but let's figure it out. Lost Pause. Yeah, I can already tell, like, this isn't a channel I would ever watch. Because these thumbnails are just, like, they're just not it. These are, like, thumbnails I try to appeal to with, like, younger kids. Like, I need, I know these are, like, a recent ones. I guess here's this Nekopara one that I did, in fact, already inspect just to see if I would have any interest in it, and I do not. Yeah, I think he's more just making fun of the entire thing and playing it, and I, I mean, it's that Kapara, so that's pretty much fair, but, like, at the end of the day, it's not really, like, a channel that did a visual novel to do a visual novel. It's a channel that did a visual novel to make fun of people who played visual novels, so I personally cannot agree to that, at least. He did the Nekopara playthroughs, several Sakura games. A circular phenomenon started occurring here. A VN would come out, a YouTuber would play it and give the game publicity. Several people who enjoyed the videos then bought the games. YouTubers obviously chose something with pretty girls because that makes... Well, there's your problem. If the YouTuber chose it because of the pretty girls, then it's probably just not a good visual novel. They're probably playing like one of those, like either like Nekopara, that Sakura series you're talking about, or like some like succubus, big breasted, I don't know, made thing on Steam. And that's not representative of what visual novels at least can do. It's good thumbnails. Or they chose VNs with perhaps a bit of a surprising premise or twist. Well, for one, you're already spoiling that the fact that this has a surprising premise or twist. And for two, literally everybody knows that this has a surprising premise or twist. So, I mean, and like literally everybody and their moms did a video on this game in 2017. That's how I actually got into visual novels, I would argue. Because people did videos on this, and then I looked up mods. So I did mods. Like, I had like the... 
the freaking just Monica one where she was just like your monitor and you'd play chess with her and shit. And then the, like other like long story mods that by the way were better than like the Doki Doki Literature Club Plus, but we're not getting into that at the moment. The cycle managed to sustain itself for several years, but eventually things started to change, like they usually do. Around 2017 and 18 is when things go downhill on the YouTube. Around 2017 and 2018, right? 27, like the end of 2017 is when Doki Doki Literature Club came out. Like, like we can literally see that right here. So I have to question that because like the release of Doki Doki Literature Club is probably like one of the biggest things that happened to visual novels in a long time. So how can we just go downhill from here? That's my question. YouTube end of things. Like 178,000 overwhelmingly positive reviews in general, overwhelmingly positive. Remember how I mentioned that many VNs have 18 plus versions? Well, several yes. YouTubers, especially ones still trying to make a name for themselves, started playing the 18 plus versions, though they, you know, they did censor. Well, that's their freaking fault. Like most visual novels have censored versions. You don't like, they probably played the uncensored versions to like, you know, censor it with some like couple of photos. Like I know with Kato, the Kato Shoujo video, the first one I ever did. I censored um, something with my own face. It's their fault if they're popular and they get hit with that because they probably should not be doing that. Just play the uncensored version and everybody's happy. Sure, it's not as interesting. There's no freaking porn happening, but it's sick. To themselves during edit, or rather the game footage. Obviously, that got them attention. And, you know, because uh, this whole genre was still like a novelty and not a lot of people were, you know, were aware of it. Suddenly having these uh, H scenes come up and then the YouTubers reacting to them being like, oh my god, what's happening? You know, it was Oh my god, porn, I can't believe it. I never expected porn in this 18 plus visual novel that I knew had porn in it. It's funny for a lot of people. But the thing is, that also got YouTube's attention and videos started getting demonetized and even deleted. For a bit, people tried to find... Well, no shit. People aren't as stupid these days, to be honest. Like, we're not putting freaking porn on our videos. We're making videos on visual novels. We're not making videos on the visual novel age scenes and or the visual novel porn that happens to come with the visual novels. We actively actually avoid that. We can, in fact, talk about age scenes. In fact, I was a part of a video by Acid that talked about age scenes. Uh, it's on the screen somewhere. It's several ways of censoring the footage. Everything from blurring... You know, using mosaics to... Don't even talk about mosaics. Like, the half the visual novel community will freaking, like, gut you about mosaics. Mosaics are, like, the thing that, like, I don't know exactly why, because I guess I personally don't care that much about age scenes. But, like, if you have mosaics, then, like, people will stab you. That's all I have to say. Covering things up with novelty images, and even just zooming in in order to crop out the activities... Instead of engaging with this back and forth, YouTube eventually ended up just automatically flagging. Speaking of like a uh, back and forth about like this problem, in my Muv Love Unlimited video, you probably don't remember because I released that like approximately over two years ago. The thumbnail has Maya in her tracksuit, but that tracksuit YouTube did not like. Originally it was zoomed out a lot more, but I guess because it looks like nudity, YouTube got it. You know, like they banned, like they banned it. So like, it took me like seven times. Like I'd slowly zoomed in then YouTube be like, nope. And then zoom in again. Nope. Zoom in again. Nope. It like, until like it was as zoomed in as it currently is. Like if you go check it out. Yeah. I had to zoom in at least that much to not get it like got. I still like look at it every now and then because I'm afraid YouTube will freaking get rid of the thumbnail. Getting VN playthroughs, even if the all ages version was played. Entire channels even got deleted or had strikes that kept them from posting for months. Obviously, you know, many people stopped making videos on those games because they feared for their YouTube channel. And, uh, you know, for a lot of channels, that's their livelihood as well. So, yeah. But it wasn't just YouTubers. We also have all the lazy attempts to capitalize on the VN popularity boom. Which I think is kind of dumb. You know, honestly, like, the visual novels are, like, such a specific niche and like, if you do like any research, you could realize that most visual novel players don't read Western visual novels. So if you're trying to like capitalize on it by making like, I don't know, like literally anything, it could be the, like the best Western visual novel ever, and you're probably not even making a profit. I just don't know why you would like even consider that if you're trying to capitalize on the popularity boom, at least. 
if you just want to make a good visual novel and that's it, good for you. But like, I wouldn't like invest money into this. One of the prime examples here is Wing Cloud with their Sakura series of games. He talks about Sakura a lot. I still don't know anything about Wing Cloud or Sakura. Again, it sounds like Western shovelware, but... Which I already mentioned. Wing Cloud was actually very lucky and they enjoyed early success with a lot of YouTubers picking up their games. They churned out games like No Tomorrow and actually still do... Yeah, that sounds like shovelware to me, honestly. Like, I don't know. I don't, I've never played these games, but like, they look like Grand Pie shovelware. So, today, which is part of the problem. If you look at 2014 to 2016, there were 12 Sakura games that came out, which is... 12 in two years. <laughs> That's all you gotta say, man. That's one every two months. They clearly didn't put a lot of effort into these games, so why should I put effort into even reading these? A lot. And they weren't even that cheap. Which is annoying considering And they probably weren't even that good. Considering that the vast majority of their visual novels don't have voice acting, use almost comically stereotypical for the genre stock music, and have grammar They probably use Kevin McLeod music. Same there, but like you can't judge that man. Calm down. Burn spelling errors galore. It was the same story released after because someone tell me if this, these like uh, visual novels are actually like, translated from Japanese or not, or do they just have spelling errors? Because if they just have spelling errors and like it's an English or Western developer, that's kind of embarrassing. Release. Not to mention that they promised sequels that never came. The only there was already sequels upon sequels. There's literally freaking like twelve of them in two years. What are you talking about? Who cares about the sequels? You'll just get like Sakura seventeen thousand in like next year. So who cares? The only ones I can really recommend these days from their, you know, vast library of games is Sakura Nova, which has several roots and Japanese. He's still talking about Sakura. I mean, like, he's focusing too much on a visual novel that literally nobody in the visual novel community has either read or cared about. He's voice acting. And then there's also Sakura Dungeon, which is actually a dungeon crawler with VN elements. Yes, it's a dungeon crawler with VN elements. It's not a visual novel with dungeon crawler elements. Let's get that straight. Their other VNs are basically more of the same. There's a couple of free ones. So they're like relatively crappy RPGs that do have visual novel elements. I wouldn't even call those visual novels personally. I don't know. Some people would, some people wouldn't. Depends like on the ratio for me. I'm not somebody who says like, if any visual novel has any mechanics, it's not a visual novel. I'm not that kind of guy. But this to me does not look like a visual novel. It's too, so you know, if you like the art, then... Might as well give those a go as well, right? The art's nice. I'm not going to give it a go, but the art's nice. As a side note, Twitch, by the way, has a banned games list. And what I think is pretty funny is that it includes several specific Sakura titles that were popular early on. He's still talking about Sakura. They updated the list last year to include Honey Pop 2, but... Well, yeah, no shit. It's a porn game. They didn't add any Sakura games, so even Twitch couldn't be bothered to keep... Do those Sakura games even have, like, age scenes? Maybe I even feel bad for Sakura for getting got like that. I mean, I understand Honey Pop because you got those freaking... I mean, you can censor it. They give you like three options in their um, uh, porn scenes. But Jesus, man. Rip Sakura. But with the releases. So the problem now was that other companies tried doing the same, like Wing Cloud. And that totally oversaturated the market with shovelware, basically. Now we're getting to it. He's pretty much admitting that Sakura is shovelware, so I'll take it. It took us, uh, what is it, like most of this video to get to this point, but he pretty much finally admitted it, so sweet. Kind of like how the Wii gained a reputation for lots of shovelware, you know, the VN genre kind of had the same thing going on. And we do get like lots of Steam Chinese shovelware, low effort Chinese visual novels, or just like low effort Western visual novels. Even like uh, with my low subscriber base, I get emails from, uh, no offense to these Western developers, I do check out every email I get. And a lot of them, they just, they don't look that good. <laughs> you know, they pretty much look like shovelware. And as much as I would like to help indie visual novel developers, I can't in good conscience recommend some things that just look like absolute dog shit. On a related note, if you look at the first Honey Pop game, you can see the same thing happened there. The amount of copycat anime puzzle games that exist are almost endless. It's true, and I have like too many of them because like every single time it's my birthday, like three of my friends fucking send me one of them. They're like 
50 cents because they're 75% off indefinitely. And they just send me them and I play all of them. The best one I played was like this Yuri Train one. It was like just like a pretty shitty puzzle game. Every time you completed it, you got like a Yuri animated scene. So, you know, I took it, I played it. I didn't really enjoy it, but I played it. And what's really funny now is that in order to be original, they uh they like copy like mobile puzzle games so they're just being low effort in another way which is pretty low effort now you have to pay money to get energy back to just fucking play them that sounds like an absolute win to me pretty funny despite all of that happening it did create a sustainable niche for the visual novel industry in the west despite all of that happening it didn't really do anything for the visual novel community. Like most of that shit didn't even have anything to do with visual novels and the visual novel things that did happen to be involved with visual novels weren't even like popular amongst visual novel enthusiasts. So I don't know what you want me to say. Like, where's the fall? Like was the fall the Sakata series? I mean, that would make sense to me. <laughs> 2014 or something, we get Nekapara. That's great. Then Sakura comes out and everyone's like, oh shit, visual novels are fucking garbage. And now people are like realizing, oh, Clannad, Steins Gate, these things are good. And are we, is that what, why the quotes are there? What do you want me to say? <laughs> Remember how I said that fall was in quotations? Yes, that's what we just talked about. In the video title? Well, that's why. Visual novels got the big attention. It yes, we did. We got the big attention. That's how I got into visual novels recently tapered off but what we've got it, left is a new it did taper off but it didn't taper off like when you said you know it more or less tapered off like it, it grew in like 2020 and tapered off like 2021 that's what, that was like our biggest growth i realized that there, that there there was more so like a steady growth from like the time you said like the mid 2000s or something which had like three visual novels in total up until like 2019 there's like a steady growth or so I would say. And then it blew up because everybody was at home and they were watching anime and they realized, oh, this anime has a visual novel. So they read that visual novel and they, oh, visual novels are pretty good. They started reading visual novels. So like, I'm not too sure about this. I could 100% be wrong, but that's at least what I see of it. New Western fan base that appreciates the genre and once more. Over the years, we've seen the release of new VNs and releases of classics. This applies to consoles and PC. Unfortunately, there are times when Steam randomly doesn't allow certain ones on its platform. You know, like the the ones with porn. Yeah, I, I hate those ones. And Chaos Head. Can't forget Chaos Head for some reason. Uh, there's no specific reason for Chaos Head, but they were just like, oh, let's just commit chaos. I guess it's in the name, so fair enough. No Chaos Head for you. And then GOG doesn't allow 18 plus versions of VNs, so that's kind of a problem there. So They're just use like Jast or Manga Gamer or like any other like visual novel website that's literally recommended on the first page of the r slash visual novels subreddit. Like there's 7,000 like good stores, even like the Japanese ones, just buy it off there and get a freaking translation if it doesn't even have a translation yet get a fan translation steam is rough steam doesn't let a lot of visual novels on thankfully they let little busters this is a great stop for me because i love little busters it's my favorite visual novel but yeah if you want those eight scenes you're either gonna have to patch them into the steam version or just buy them somewhere else there's still instances where vns don't have a proper platform and certain sites have really awful drm Unfortunately, that's something plaguing the genre at the moment. Is it really? Just buy it off jazz, man. Don't see the problem. But yeah, that's that regarding the rise and fall of visual novels. Well, he doesn't even like include YouTube chapters. If I was him, I'd like include like an introduction and then the rise and then the fall. But to be honest, it wasn't really clear where there was the rise and where there was the fall. I kind of got it, but like... It just wasn't really clear, especially with the quote-unquote fall. Like, the fall, I guess, is like the um, stagnation that the current visual novel fan base is having. But the so-called fall that he's talking about is outdated, if anything. And, in fact, his rise is outdated, too. Because, again, we got, like, a huge surge once COVID came. I think that would even be a more interesting video topic, how the visual novel community grew during covid this rise and fall here and pretty much that's a low amount of views for the amount of subscribers he has yeah i just let's just watch the rest of the video before i give my final thoughts here 
and its overlapping neighbor genres. I hope that was helpful or interesting. If you've got anything to add, please comment below. There's multiple facets to this. Should I comment below, guys? Comment below, and I will leave a comment on this video if you feel like I should. Oh, I could I could completely go off on him, but I feel like I mean I'm Bruce Gun Loose, so I should go loose, but like I do have some respect and this guy has a lot more subscribers than me and he can just strike me, so I don't really want to do that. <laughs> this and if you have specific games you want to talk about, that is very welcome. Like I said, I didn't really mention, you know, like I mean I can't mention all the visual novels. But in the edit, hope you could at least mention the ones that people play. Hopefully I managed to show quite a few that were you know, popular at the time. Not really, unfortunately. I think you tried, but you didn't. Sorry. And things like that. Remember that there's a second channel you can subscribe to. I yeah, I think the video's over. Yeah, it looks like it's over. Okay, so the first thing I want to mention, since I'm reacting to this and like the 50 people that actually watch this video up to this point, just don't like go on his comment section, go off on him. I think he legitimately tried and I think we should appreciate that because it does bring at least more people to the visual novel genre because it brings more viewership to it, whether good or bad. But I don't think this video was necessarily correct. There were some specific points. The Rise, for example, the Rise wasn't necessarily wrong, but I think considering this video was released about a month or so ago, he should have acknowledged the uh, more recent increase in visual novel interest. And he could have also mentioned the stagnation that we're probably currently having in 2022. However, between the years of like mid 2000s and like up to 2018, I think that's like the age of this video, what he's looking at. I don't know a lot about that, but I can say for certain that like Nekopara and Sakura are not the only visual novels that would have been big at the time. He did go through, like he did scroll through some key visual novels. He should have just like bought one and made footage of it. If he like had any like legitimately good Japanese visual novel recording and showed it, that would have like already improved the video like marginally. I'm not asking him to spend like fucking $50 on Clanat or something like that. But overall, I think this video is good in a sense that it'll bring people to the community, but ignorant in a sense that it doesn't really know, or rather the modern visual novel community. And again, that's coming from somebody who's relatively recent in the community. I wasn't back then. This guy's like probably 35 and he knows more than me. However, I've done my research and I think at least within the last two years, he should have mentioned something. I think he was too focused on the time he knew visual novels and didn't focus on the time maybe he didn't know visual novels. And that's fair, but if you're making a video on it, if you're making a video on the rise and fall of visual novels, you really should like look more into it. <laughs> Especially at, like recent times, like if you haven't read a visual novel in like four years, you should still look into that time because things can change drastically very quickly. And I feel like they did in this time. And again, he didn't really show any good, like what I would say to be a good visual novel. So that's relatively unfortunate. But overall, I appreciate that this video exists and I hope it at least brings one person, if any, to the visual novel community. But it is not all knowing. And I think it is relatively dated in a sense that it doesn't know the recent visual novel community. But yeah, that's all. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, if you want to see more React content, to be honest, I wouldn't know what I would react to, but if you want to see it, I'll do it. Recommend it in the comments if you have something that I should react to. If not, then um, uh, this might be a one of a kind video. This might be the only time you ever see my beautiful mug, but until then, see you next time, my dudes.